In this tutorial, we're going to talk about a specific type of thin walled pressure vessel. The cylindrical pressure vessel is one of the most common shapes of vessel. Examples of thin wall cylindrical vessels include aerosol cans, many types of pressurized gas containers, and even balloons. Thin and thick walled vessels alike both experience longitudinal or axial stress. This type of stress is observed along the length of the cylinder. They also both experience the effects of circumferential or hoop stress. Hoop stress occurs across the circumference and attempts to stretch it out basically. But this is where the similarities end. The remaining stress type is radial stress. Stress in this direction occurs throughout the wall thickness. For an internally pressurized vessel, the stress is highest at the innermost radius. And this stress gradually decreases as it reaches the non-pressurized outer shell. But although thick walled vessels account for this effect, we discount it for thin vessels. This is as the ratio of wall thickness versus vessel diameter is considered so small that the pressure is equal across the wall. To consider a vessel thin walled, the ratio of radius over wall thickness must be greater or equal to 10. A cylinder of 4 meters, inches, feet, or other designation and thickness of 0.4 of the same units would generate a ratio of 10 making it thin walled. Increasing the thickness to 0.5 tips the ratio. The ratio decreases to 8 so the vessel is thick walled. Just for reference, if we use the diameter instead of radius the ratio threshold becomes 20. Right, so I've covered thick walled vessels in another video. So for the rest of this tutorial, we'll just focus on the thin type. The two principal stresses of hoop and axial stresses are calculated as follows. Stress is PD over 2T or PD over 4T respectively. So P, pressure inside the vessel, D, internal diameter, and T, wall thickness, make up the variables. These equations are key in identifying which stress type has greatest effect. Dividing by 2 times the wall thickness as opposed to 4 times T dictates that hoop stress is likely to be equal to or greater than 2 times axial stress. So we can assume as maximum stress is observed at the circumference, failure will always occur here instead of in the axial direction. It therefore goes that maximum pressure is calculated based on hoop stress. So P or pressure max is two times T times hoop stress over D. The calculation for strain is as follows. Hoop strain is 1 over E times hoop stress minus V times axial stress. Whereas axial strain sees hoop and axial stresses switch places. E in this case represents the Young's modulus of the material and V represents the Poisson's ratio. Without going into too much detail on Poisson's ratio, most metals have a V value between 0.25 and 0.35. This is positive. A material is given a positive value if when subjected to axial expansion, the material also sees a reduction in material thickness in a perpendicular direction. There are a few other equations we need to consider next. The change, in in change of internal volume of the cylinder under load is P D over 4 T E 
times 5 minus 4v, that's little v, times capital V. The change of volume of the contained liquid under load, or pressure, is P, capital V over K. Let's um, quickly identify the new inputs. So K is the bulk mod modulus of the liquid. I've listed a few examples. Um, so we have mercury at 28.5 GPA, glycerin 4.35 GPA, water 2.15 GPA. And capital V is the volume. Next, we need the change in length under load. The equation is axial strain times the original length. It can also be written as 1 over E times axial stress minus V, that's little v, times hoop stress, which in turn can be rewritten. The axial and circumferential stress values can be substituted for figures. This is, as we know, circumferential or hoop stress is at least twice axial stress. The last variable to work out is the change in diameter. We're going to derive the change in diameter from the change in circumference. So hoop stress times pi d can be rewritten as shown. Now let's go for the change in diameter. So hoop stress times d can be rewritten as d over e times hoop stress minus v times axial stress. Or pd squared over 4te times 2 minus v. OK, so that's the theory. So let's, let's have a look at putting the theory into a practical problem to finish. So a cylinder has an internal diameter of 300 millimetres, 5 millimetres wall thickness, and is 1.2 metres long. The internal volume changes by 11 times 10 to the power of minus 6 metres cubed when filled with a liquid at pressure P. If E equals 180 giganewtons uh, per meter squared and V, that's little v, equals 0.25, let's determine the following. So A, hoop and longitudinal stresses. B, the modified stresses if joint efficiencies of 80% for hoop stress and 95% at longitudinal stresses are assumed. And C, the change in pressure, P, to produce further increase in internal volume of 8%. Okay, so first I need to check if the vessel is thin-walled. D over T is 60. I'm looking at the diameter here. And this is greater than 20. So the vessel is thin walled. Now let's list the parameters. So we have the change in volume, but we need the original volume to go any further. Let's calculate it. So V in terms of volume equals pi over four times diameter times length. The volume is 0 0.0848 meters cubed. Now we can find the pressure using both original and change in volume. So let's take the change in volume equation, little v, or Poisson's ratio, is 0 0.25, so we can reduce 4 to 1. We could also bring volume into the fraction. We can then further rearrange to find P. So now let's populate the equation. And from this, we can calculate the pressure P 
is 0 0.389 meganewtons per meter squared. And by knowing this, we can now find the stresses required for part A. So hoop and longitudinal stresses are P times D over 2 or 4 times D depending on the stress. Let's lay out the figures. And this gives us a stress of 11.67 meganewtons per square meter for hoop. It also gives a stress of 5.84 meganewtons per meter squared for axial. We could write this in terms of pascals. And this is a straightforward conversion for pascals. For section B, we need to apply efficiencies. We can add the percentages to the base of each fraction. And this gives us a modified value for both hoop and axial stresses. Here, material or mechanical deficiencies at joints in another scenario could lead to axial failure, but this could only occur if the axial efficiency was less than half of hoop efficiency. The final requirement for part C is the pressure change from an 8% volume increase. If we take the pressure previously calculated, applying an 8% drop gives us a change of 0.311 meganewtons per meter squared. Okay, so that's it. This is a brief introduction to thin walled pressure vessels as well as a practical problem to finish. I hope you like this video. Um, I do have another in the series focusing on thick walled pressure vessels. So if you're interested in the subject, please look up this, um, this video or, or follow the link in the end screen here.